So today we're going to talk a little bit about how I purchase and store uh, meats and proteins for my family. Our local grocery store has something that they call um, pick five. And you can pick five meats any, any day of the week. It's pick five for $19.99. Um, about once a month they'll run a sale where it's five dollars off so you can pick five for fourteen ninety nine. and when they do that I will go and I always if nothing else a lot of times I'll just buy bacon because I can get five pounds bacon for fourteen ninety nine. and when can you do that and the bacon that they have in this section I actually really like a whole lot so I did uh, this was a few weeks back so this was kinda not long after pantry challenge and um, we were really running low on our proteins and it was time to really get stocked back up. So um, I went ahead and got some things that we do use frequently and then I also got some new things like chicken thighs and chicken legs are not things that I typically keep in stock but um, my kids really like them so I'm going to try to to use some of those. These are country style ribs. I have one particular recipe that I typically use these with. I might branch out and see if we can try some more. And we got lots of um, hot dogs and bacon. I think you can do this twice. When you go, um, you can get basically 10 items. I think I had gone, because they run it two days, they run it on Friday and they run it on Saturday. And I think I went both days. So I think I got like 20 total items for excuse me, like $60. So really, I mean, in terms of what we're going to put in the freezer for 60 bucks, I mean, this is a heck of a deal. Um, so we got some various items and I have been vacuum sealing meat for, well, a couple of decades, really. Um, I, I think it was, you know, when my husband and I first got married, I got my first food saver and, uh, and I've been vacuum sealing meat ever since because it does not keep. If you put it in the freezer and you put it in just the store packaging that I, that it came in, it's going to get freezer burnt. It's going to be terrible. Um, it's just not going to keep. So I really had to make our dollars last. You know, I cannot stand to waste food. I can't stand for things to be like just have go down in quality just because they need to be stored and can't be used right away. Um, so this is really the best thing. And it also helps my weekly grocery budget. When I have um, proteins in the freezer that I can pull from, um, you know, it makes it easier sometimes in those weeks where like maybe you're waiting for payday or something and you don't, um, uh, you know, have a lot of budget to work with. So I've been doing this and practicing this for years and years and years. Um, I used to go to Sam's Club about twice a year and I would stock up on like what would, what would be sometimes like about six months worth of meat. Um, and so I would go and I'd spend like a couple hundred dollars on meat. I'd come back. I would do a really big um, just vacuum sealing afternoon, break down whole pork loins, um, things of that nature, 10 pound logs of ground beef. Um, I did that for years, but I've not done that for quite some time just because there's not really um, the bulk budget. Uh, I did that a lot when my husband was a fly fishing guide and so he kind of would just bring in extra money at certain times of the year and sometimes I would take that and stock up the freezer but now I kind of have to just sort of continue my stock along throughout the year and I've become very very savvy when it comes to what my stores have on sale and when and to be watching for that and they've got some really good sales that make it really easy to stock up and put a lot of protein in the freezer. Again, we're I really want to buy a cow. I, oh, I want to buy a cow so much, but I have no place to put a cow. And um, so this is, you know, what I can do in the meantime. Not everybody's going to have a place to, you know, store, have a freezer to store half a cow in, you know, or even have any ambition to do that at all. So this is really just to show you, um, you don't have to have a year's supply of meat, you know, on hand you know, at a time. But certainly if you can keep a regular stock of some things, it does kind of help the, the weekly uh, grocery budget in the long run. So um, this is a new vacuum sealer to me this year. This is Avid Armor is the brand name. Um, again, I reference her all the time, but I, I really have learned a whole lot by, from uh, Becky at Acre Homestead, super influenced by her, not gonna lie. Um, so what happened was, um, 
I've, I've owned two food savers in my life. I've been food saving, I've been vacuum sealing for over 20 years, and I have owned two food savers. The first one that I bought lasted me like, it was over 10 years. It was like 11 years or something like that. And, um, and it just, you know, it just died. It gave up the ghost. And I went and I had to replace it because I, like a vacuum sealer is pretty much my number one appliance of all things that I have to have. I have to have a working vacuum sealer. And um, my math is not going to math right as I'm telling you these years and stuff. So I don't know when I got that first vacuum sealer or how old it actually was, but I had it for a really long time. Anyway, when it broke, I had to go out pretty much and get a new one, like right away. I didn't get anything fancy. I don't use all the fancy attachments or anything like that. I just need something that's going to suck the air out of the bag. And so I went and I got one and I didn't even get like three years out of it. Um, it just, it just died. And even after like the first year I was having problems, the button, um, there's two buttons, there's a vacuum seal button and there's just a seal button. And like the seal button was turning the vacuum on and it, it was, it was just a problem. It was so frustrating. I, I don't have a whole lot of pet peeves in life, but one of my major pet peeves is something not working the way it's supposed to. will lose my mind in a split second if something is not working the way it's supposed to. Um, so I had to go and uh, I had just like, I'm going to have to replace this. What am I going to do? I, I, and I did some research and I kind of did some Googling and stuff. And I found that really my, that first food saver that I had bought was an anomaly. Most people only get three or four years out of their food savers and then they have to replace them. For me to have gotten like 10 plus years out of it was actually, uh, really rare. And so it, after reading that and reading that from multiple people um, that are having that same experience, I was like, you know, these things are, this is a hundred plus dollars. This is between a hundred and two hundred dollars, depending on, you know, where and when you buy it. So um, I did not want to buy another food saver. And it wasn't long before that, that Becky had bought this food saver. I had watched her use it a few times um, and I was really impressed with it. She she was impressed with it. It looked really interesting to me. It's a little more industrial, you know, than, um, than food saver brand. Um, this brand does have their own, uh, bags and they're pretty, uh, fairly inexpensive on Amazon. I just bought some recently. Um, uh, but so far I've had this for, it's probably been more than six months now. Um, and I am really happy with it. Um, the only thing I will say, and you might see this as we go throughout this this video is that one it does have like major suction so if there's any moisture in what you're putting into these bags it is going to suck that up like into the channel and it's going to be there where it's trying to seal so you'll see me like double seal some of these bags because there's just moisture where the where the seal is and I don't trust it and so I just kind of like double seal it just for extra insurance and I was having some trouble with these hot dogs some of them just kind of were losing um we're losing their vacuum even after they sat here for you know just a few minutes it's the only problem that I ever really had um but there's there's something that you can do to help that that i was just being too lazy to do on this particular day and you can take a paper towel and you can fold the paper towel um to where it fits you know the width of the bag you want it to be a couple of inches down from where it's going to seal because it you know you can cause a fire if it gets in the seal strip um but if you just tuck a paper towel in there, then any moisture that comes up from the meat that's in the bag is going to suck into that paper towel. And then that way the plastic is going to stay dry or the um, seal strip is going to, to melt it and seal it. So I, I was just being lazy, really, uh, at this particular time. But I do get smarter. Um, and... Uh, and I, I fixed the problem. But it's a really simple solution. It's just kind of annoying to like fold paper towels, especially when you're making like tons of bags and stuff like I'm doing today and I'm breaking down all this stuff and portioning it out. Um, but it's, like I said, a simple fix. It's not a problem. Uh, other than that, this thing has worked absolutely wonderfully well and I could not be happier with it at this point. So now what we're going to get into um, is something called Chuck Tender Steaks. Um, this is not a cut of meat that I typically buy, but when I had went the first day on Friday for this sale, it's kind of slim pickings. It had really been picked over really well and there wasn't a whole lot left. And I saw these and I thought, well, 
you know, maybe I could do something with them. I don't know. Um, and I actually was thinking about a recipe in one of my very first cookbooks that I have, which is a, uh, a Betty Crocker bridal edition cookbook. There is a recipe, um, just like Southwest sirloin steak or something is what it's called. It's just like a pan fried steak. And then there's this like sort of homemade Southwest macaroni and cheese, um, that goes with it. And so I might pull this out one day and make that recipe. I've, I've looked at that recipe many times. I've often thought about making it. I think I actually did make it many, many years ago. Um, and it wasn't too bad. Might need to tweak it a little bit now that I know a little bit more. Um, but I think that's probably what we'll pull out and use these for. And here you can see I got smart and I got a paper towel. And there was definitely some moisture that had come up from the steaks. But my seal is great. It's still sealed in the freezer. Everything's working fantastic with that. Um, so there was just two packages. They were packaged um, three in each. And I just packaged them all together. I figured, you know, we'll probably just have some, some leftovers or something. So this right here is stew meat. These are... These packages are probably a little less than a pound, um, which is totally fine. I, I don't need a full, for what I make and use stew meat for, I don't need a full uh, pound for it. Um, most of the time, what this gets used for is beef tips and noodles. It's a family favorite recipe. I don't think you've seen it yet on this channel. Um, we'll try to bring that to you um, sometime because my kids absolutely love it. It's one of their favorites. I don't ever really make beef stew, but I kind of, to be honest with you, um, with all this stew meat like in my freezer, I kind of have a hankering for beef stew. I do really enjoy beef stew myself. And so it isn't going to end up being something if I make it. It's, you know, mostly just because I want it, not because anybody else is going to love it. But I kind of feel like beef stew in the Instapot is going to be really, really good. And I want to try that out and see. Um, who knows? Maybe my family will get behind it too. Wouldn't that be awesome? The next thing that we have um, coming up is something called country style ribs. Um, these are boneless, and um, this is essentially, um, it's the same cut that pork chops come from. So you have the whole pork loin, and I've actually just made these myself before when I've gotten whole pork loins from Sam's. Um, just kind of cut it in half, um, you know, lengthwise, you know, and then you just take that and then you cut that in um, kind of like wide strips or whatever and they call them country style ribs for you know whatever reason um, but they're you know they're they're really good they're um, it is like the the whiter you know pork chop you know kind of meat so they can kind of tend to dry be dry depending on what you do with them now the recipe that I make with them um, I don't think I don't think we've shown that either. It's actually a recipe that my aunt um, taught me, and I have it somewhere. Maybe I'll link it in this video, um, or, or put it in the description for you. But it's just a, like a barbecue sauce, really. They cook for a really long time. I did recently um, adapt that recipe to the Instapot, and what used to take me like three and a half hours um, to make as a low and slow meal, um, I got on the table in probably, I think it was like an hour. Um, by the time all was said and done and it worked out wonderful that I'm telling you the Instapot is whoo I am definitely you know <laughs> behind on the game but I am really excited with that piece of equipment in my kitchen that's really making a great big difference um, I kind of did like one package plus one or two I got for for three meals um, for us just because some of them you know, they're kind of thicker cuts, like only four pieces, and that's not really enough for us when we sit down uh, for a meal. So I put an average of about um, five or six in each package, depending on, uh, you know, the size of them or whatever. Just kind of split it up between three bags. Now that we've got them all packaged together, I've got paper towels in there so that we get a good seal and a good vacuum on our packages. Uh, we're just going to label them and put them in the freezer. I didn't label my things for quite a long time. And then um, I always knew what it was. But then my poor husband, if he had to go into the freezer and get anything or lay anything out or, you know, 
goodness, even if you had to cook something, you had no idea, you know, what anything was. So I try to be really good about making sure that there's labels on everything when I put it in the freezer now. Um, and I, I keep more of a stock these days uh, as well. So it's, I try to make sure if I can that there's like dates on there so they can pull out the old first. Um, I always buy my vacuum sealing bags um, on a roll so that I can customize the the size. Over the summer, I found that the pre-made bags, and of course I was still using my old food saver, so I was having some problems um, with it anyway. It was just frustrating. I was using the pre-sized bags, and those worked out really well when it came to preserving my vegetables and stuff like that. But when it comes to meat, I, I do tend to like oversize my bags because, again, trying to make sure that, that moisture like doesn't come up and, and affect my seal. Um, I like to just size them out myself. So when you do that, you have to seal, you know, one end, um, you know, and turn it into a bag before you actually put the stuff in there, um, and vacuum it and then seal it. If you're not familiar, you know, with how this process works, you're wondering what I was doing, um, putting a seal on the bag to actually form the bag from the roll. And so these are the chicken legs. I think I put about 10 in a bag because, I don't really care for chicken legs, but my kids can easily throw down on at least three of them a piece. Um, so I went ahead and I just packaged them by 10. I think we got three, I bought two five pound bags. And so I think we got about three bags of chicken legs. So that's three meals for us for, um, you know, what, what was it? You got five, they're like $3. So dollars a piece um and so that worked out really well i wasn't super happy so the quality was kind of bumming me out a little bit because like some of the you know the bones were broken you know and some of them been kind of wobbly and uh, definitely mismatched in size same thing with the chicken thighs when we get to those like some of the chicken thighs were absolutely enormous and then some of them were teeny tiny and made you go like is this a chicken thigh are we sure do we know what this is um and so it was just kind of, I had to package them, um, you know, kind of according to size and stuff as best as that, that I could. And it was, uh, it wasn't really all that easy to be honest, but we have cooked some of them since and they, they tasted great. They were fantastic. So no more complaints for me on that. And so here we go. We're, um, packaging up chicken thighs. As I was taking them out of the package and putting them in the bowl, I tried to like put like sizes together. Um, to make it easier to put them in the package. But um, same thing as with the chicken legs, um, we did, um, I got three, three packages of chicken thighs. So it was like three, um, three meals for us out of that. Um, and then it worked out like, see, <laughs> there's some that's like, they're teeny tiny. Um, so I was trying to pull out like, you know, the big ones, looks like I've got like six in there. Um, some of them might have been a little bit more than that, um, you know, just because they were a lot smaller. Um, we just kind of tried to put something together that made sense uh, for everybody, but it worked out good. Like I said, it's, uh, it was inexpensive, and we got some, we've got some meals in the freezer, so that's what's important. This clip is actually weeks later. Um, this is the salmon that I had gotten, uh, that I told you about in one of my previous videos. We had gotten a great deal at Sam's Club when we went on a Saturday. All their salmon was marked down like 24% from the original price. And then it was a um, instant savings day where you got another $3 off. And what was really exciting was that like I had asked the butcher um, cause they had that sign for the $3 off and it was already marked down considerably. And so I was asking him, you know, to make sure, um, I said, do you get the $3 off in addition to this price or is this, you know, just the sticker price? And he said the $3 off wouldn't apply because it was already marked down. And so I was like, okay. Um, but I picked up six anyway, because even at 24% off, it was a, uh, steal it was a steal and then when I got to the register they gave me three dollars off for each and every one of them so we came home with six full salmon fillets for eighty five dollars and that is just unheard of um, even at its cheapest when I first started buying salmon from Sam's Club like 
goodness, 10 years ago, um, I could not get it that cheap. It was an average of $14.50 for a full filet. It's unbelievable. So for my family, I like to cut the whole filet in half and then I just vacuum seal that. Um, I typically, when I make salmon, there's pretty much, and you've seen it, it's the, um, the pineapple salmon recipe that we use. That's typically what I do. Um, each and every time though the recent discovery of the bang bang salmon bite bowls uh, will definitely make another appearance in our lives we've got plenty of salmon in the freezer we can try out new things it's going to be glorious well that's it friends I hope you have enjoyed this video if you do please give it a like and subscribe to our channel hang out with us and see what we're doing next I hope this has given you some good tips and tricks that maybe you can apply in your kitchen at home I hope you all have a fantastic day